authoritarian dictators in the pursuit of power. They were not doing those atrocities in the name of atheism. Don't lie. Don't put me in that box Running because away. I am a secular humanist. Okay. You may be an ethical person. I'm saying in the vast majority of cases, atheists hurt more than they help. They're essentially a net loss to society, while the average religious person, I believe, is a net game. Although, yes, there are beautiful atheists and crappy religious people and vice versa. However, the idea that you think society would be better if everyone walked around trying to reinvent the wheel ethically for themselves, right? I mean, children should figure things out on their own instead of having clear sound biblical values taught to them for a child, you actually believe that a child that receives no ethical immovable education, because that's what pretty much when you're tossing away a standard and that you make everything, you know, I mean, subjective, that's what you end up with, that that child is going to end up better than someone who grows up with a healthy fear of a good God. That's that that sounds preposterous to me. A, a, a good God would never instruct Moses or the people of Israelites to take out a child and stone them to unalivement status for what for cursing their mother and father curse now i know i know the jews think that curses are some kind of actual magic but You're they're right, not the it's more mythology three verses that you disagree with there's 613 commandments that give you the life, the life you enjoy nowadays, you're standing on the shoulders of giants, people who were religious and sensitized their existence because of that Bible, even though they didn't agree with every portion of the Bible. That's what made the founding fathers deist. Now, why do you think the Jefferson Bible, he extracted all the miraculous events, all the miracles, because he believed that ethics should be able to stand on its own. That's what made them ethical, not because they walked around saying, I believe the Bible is perfect. It's better than the alternative. For you, it's all or nothing. If the Bible is not perfect, you're going to try to eke out an existence, figuring everything out on your own and not realizing the mounds of people that you're bearing. <clears throat> That, that's why we come up with things like the secular manifesto. We have better guiding principles than than the Levitical and Deuteronomical laws. Now, maybe back in the day, you know, thousands of years ago, when people were literally consuming each other and sacrificing their firstborns so the sun would rise or the rain would fall, like these are the Deuteronomical and Levitical laws may have been a step in the right direction at the time but you're right we do have this ability to view these laws in our mo through our modern lens and we should all be able to view these laws on high right god said to moses don't eat shellfish well when was the last time you ate shellfish do you eat shellfish no i mean orthodox Jews keep dietary laws yeah so what's wrong with eating shellfish exactly oh no again the Torah is split up into two segments. There's ceremonial ritualistic law and ethical laws. You're discounting the ethical laws just because some ceremonial laws don't make sense to you or me, by the way. However, I mean, I think that... What's the, pu what's the punishment if you ate shellfish? Is there a punishment or is that just, hey, don't worry about it? Oh, well, okay. I mean, to be accurate to the text, the punishment only exists in the land of Israel. The punishments for all these laws only exist in the land of Israel. If you wanted to be a heathen, According to the Torah, you would leave outside the land of Israel. Most people don't acknowledge this, that they're about to enter a land. And if they want to be part of the club and have residency or citizenship in that land, these are laws they have to keep. But unlike the Islamic vision for a global caliphate, there is somewhere you can hide. The vast majority of Jewish people throughout history always lived outside of the land of Israel because they know that it's very difficult to live in the land of Israel. So it doesn't mean that God wanted this for everyone, by the way. So, uh, are, that, that brings up another great point. Why are there Jews or Christians or, uh, again, like you said, Islam does have the caliphate idea, but why are there Jews or Christians anywhere in the world outside of Israel? And, and yet they, they profess these, these claims, these rituals, these dogmas, these traditions, and we can all read the same scripture. We can all read the same book that says the all loving God, the God that wants the best for us, told the people of Israel to unalive their children if they blasphemed or cursed their parents. It's, it's just one of many examples. No, no, one we can talk of like three, okay, one of like three, you sound more like a wounded theist. Like not an atheist. Somebody. I'm not. Somebody, I'm not. I was never a theist. I proudly identify as an optimistic agnostic. Okay. Optimistic agnostic. Yes. 
because I don't think anyone could actually prove God exists. I don't think anyone could prove he doesn't exist. I think there's evidence, good evidence on both sides. However, what I could prove is the existence of a good God in people's lives in making them better. That's what I could prove. I know that statistically, religious people who believe in the God of the Bible give more charity, they volunteer more time, they live richer, fuller lives. Then walking around like a nihilist, feeling that you're an accident and a piece of cosmic garbage. I mean, have you seen how children who don't believe in God feel? No purpose, no instructions. Girls, you know what? That when we were single, we wish, we wish the girls that we would date didn't believe in God because they put out, right? What? It makes girls more chaste. <clears throat> it makes if you... men more chivalrous. St it's statistic even though it's not perfect. Statistically speaking. That. So then I think that we live in the same planet, but we inhabit two different realities. So you just mentioned uh, religious cultures have better lives, they're happier, etc. But if you want to get into if you want to get into statistics, those studies have been done, and the the evidence leads to the conclusion that more secular nations lead healthier, more fruitful lives. Okay, if, just be religious, by the way. I mean, secular doesn't so, mean religious. Well, not all right. So, if you look within a particular country, let's take the United States just as a quick example, right? If you look at the Bible Belt, we're talking about the most religious group of people in the United States. They have the highest divorce rates, the highest infant mortality rates, the highest disease the rates, the highest poverty married. rates. Everyone's getting married. That's why. As opposed to more secular states like New York or who or uh, and who don't procreate. That's why. Who has a you're higher just shifting primary? the burden of you're just shifting the goalpost. I'm talking about statistic primary? analysis that has been done. Would you rather live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, or in Portland, Oregon? In terms I have, of which place is safer for your family? I haven't been to either of those. I actually have been to Portland, Oregon, but only for a day. Would you rather live in a blue city or a red city? A blue city, 1,000%. Okay, even though the crime is higher? That's not true. Blue cities? Well, crime is higher in cities compared to rural areas, but that... Nashville, Tennessee, and... Getting, we're getting Seattle, away from the point. It's always going to boil down to left versus yeah, we, blue versus okay, we can we, we can have a battle of statistics if you really want, but let's get back to the original question. Why should I, as an atheist, be a Jew? Why should I strive for Judaism? There are many atheistical Jews who put their kids in religious schools because they understand that it's a net gain in that child's life to grow up with some immovable sense of ethics, of morality. And then when the child gets older, he can decide for himself. But the idea that you think that even by educating a child with religious values, that that actually makes them worse and not giving them anything, makes me feel that you don't think clearly. This immovable religious doctrine that you just spoke of consists of Leviticus.